Hey everyone, this is Amanda with Americana Gardens and today I'm going to give you a tour of this area here. This, But this is my where I put a barrel pond. And I'm sure you guys seen like aquascapes and like these beautiful ponds and you know koi fish and all that stuff. Well I can't do that where I'm at. One, because there's no electricity. Two, it's very costly to do something like that on that scale. So. I figure I'd just try a little barrel pond to add to the ecosystem. So I'm going to give you a tour of this area and hope you enjoy it. All right guys, so this trellis here marks the entrance going into the rose garden. But as you can see the log trains you and there's a pathway up along here and I will give you a tour of that another day because today the focus is on this section here. This is still a fairly new area. I believe I only started some of the plantings last year. So yeah, most of this right here is all new. We have a rhododendron here. It blooms a light purple in the spring. It's an evergreen too. It gets like a darker foliage in the uh, winter time. We have this gorgeous Brunnera. Love it. We also have these daisies here. I believe most of them have closed. Oh, here's one in a barrel. It's mostly closed, but uh, they're white with like a yellow uh, throat and they close at night and open when it's hot out again. This right here is about to bloom in a few more weeks. This is an astilbe. Um, this is a lavender blooming astilbe. Tucked in some dianthus that is now spent. You can see that here. Uh, it was like a very magenta type color very pretty and that will spread and fill in this whole area some portulacas very drought tolerant plants over here another brunnera and like I love these leaves they're so nice they have such a nice bright spot and they it, it, and they're a three season interest plant they actually have these forget-me-not blooms that come out in the spring uh, they're spent now but it's very nice. I also have these blue green strappy iris leaves. They bloom a, um, a blue, a very light blue, almost like a sky color iris in the spring as well. I just cut all the spent blooms actually. Tucked in some yarrow here that will bloom soon. Also, this is a columbine. It's out of bloom, but I still keep the foliage. And right here, I actually have four of these tucked on. This one is a little transplant shocked, but it's an angel, an angel plant. Hold on, let me see. Ah, angel wings. There we go. I was close. Some hookahs. They have these like pretty little pink blooms on them. And then we also have a coleus here. It's called Concoleus. And look at how wild the colors are on this. They're very cool. This right here is from Proven Winners. Cervetsa in lime. Now, if you touch this plant... Ooh, sorry. My nightlight just went on. Or my... Um, Late for the garden just went on. It smells like lemon and lime. It's wonderful. It's like it's, it's soft too. It's fuzzy, but it's like very sturdy. Look how that nightlight just kind of adds to the garden. Another hookara, corabel, and here we have a dark foliage. A still be now when I saw this come in this is by proven winners when I saw this come in at uh, the location where I work 
I was like, I have got to have that with the dark foliage. And this is spent right now because they're bloomed earlier when they're in the store. They're forced or earlier. Um, and it actually is a really pretty lavender color. And I put these angel wings on either side of it to add like a nice contrast. You have the light in the back and the dark in the front. So it's like pow, you know, it's very showy. I also have a delphinium in the back that will come back. I actually got that on clearance. Um, so I just popped it in. So. Look at this. I had so much fun doing this. So I had these three barrels. Oh, I forgot there's tape on that. I gotta take it off. <laughs> these three barrels. They were kind of like not really being utilized to their full potential, at least not like this. And I wanted a water feature, like a, some type of water for, you know, the butterflies, bees, and so forth to get access to it. Um, now, this is my first year doing a barrel pond. So I'll start in the back. This is a canna that bloomed this very vibrant yellow. But it's about to be out of bloom, but I still think like the tropical foliage is still neat. This is something very simple. We have a, um, a water hyacinth, actually two of them in there, and a lettuce, a water lettuce, and a bacopa, which I didn't know could stay in water. The same with the canna, uh, calla lily, canna lily, canna, yes. Canna with an N, not an L. Anyway, um, they could stay in the water as well. Next year, I will be use utilizing these two barrels as water features too. So I think that'll be really neat. I have a clematis climbing on um, these wooden trellises that I created from wood that I cut off of a smoke bush that kind of died back because of the winter but I just like utilized the pieces of wood and just like bent it and made it like my own I feel like it's a work of art when you do something like this like I wasn't sure and you know what Honestly, like, I wasn't crazy about the whole bent wood uh, branch pieces in there until I got the clematis on it. The clematis just made it work. And it's going to come back every year, so it's going to be bigger, and it's just going to be very, very dramatic, and I'm going to love it. <laughs> um, some more coleus, and also here is a allium, a uh, spent allium bloom. And I just cut them and I made little like decor decorative pieces with the barrel ponds. Catmint, some petunias. These are actually left over from my niece planting. Some more alliums there. Um, this is a bacopa focus this is also a bacopa in the front here it's closed up for the night but um it's the same that is in you could plant it in soil and you could have it in the water and it'll still go oh see here we go there's a nice little bloom yeah that's the bacopa bloom got some this is actually gara um like the, I never cut down the gara from last year, so it had like very woody stems on it, but it was still like flexible enough that I kind of just wrapped it around these uh, 
barrels here and I don't I actually feel like it just added more of like a natural effect to it um, then also adding the stones there's like a piece of wood that we had laying around forever and I got this little welcome hedgehog as a gift from the one local nursery trail gardens it's so cute I got it for my birthday <laughs> it was a little present last year so yeah this is pretty cool also on the front here uh, you can see I have these stone rocks I stuck some um, hens and chicks and there's also some flocks some ground flocks that trails over it looks very pretty in the spring but actually if we just come down here a little bit more I just put some fresh mulch down there that's why it's two different colors it'll dry up we have this lovely hydrangea, oak leaf hydrangea. This plant was introduced to me by my mom. She has one in her shade garden. And not only are the blooms just vibrant and they really pop in like a shaded area, but the leaves are stunning. They're green, but in the fall, they get a red color if they're kept out more in the sun, but more like a purple if they're in the shade. Irises, and this is backed by some arborvitaes. I'm planning to do an entire hedge of arborvitaes going down. The rest you can see where this is the last one and then I need to actually just cut down and go right to the white fence. Uh, but in time, I'll get there. I got these on clearance for like three bucks the one year. It was like around December. And they did wonderfully. Like I can't, Arborvitaes, three bucks, I'm taking it. Um, this is the Onyx Penstemon right here. It's about to go out of bloom, but the bees love it. I actually have it flanking this little mulch pathway here. I want to keep this pathway open because it allows me to get access to the back of the barrel pond if I need if I need to access it, you know, clean water or um, check on the plants. I also have this mis like the thing. If you have still water, like there's no filter or anything in this. You have to be careful of mosquitoes. And I have um, like a pellet in there that will kill mosquito larvae. So very happy that I found something that's organic. That's the important part. So when, you know, other animals uh, like dragonflies come to drink out of it, it's not going to hurt them. It only targets mosquito larvae. But look at that, isn't that just gorgeous? This view. <laughs> I'm just so happy we, that like how it turned out. I don't even like ah, it's so pretty. The lighting hitting the barrels, the lighting on the trellis, and I also have lighting in the back going up to um, my cafe de floor showpiece on the fence. You can kind of see it in the distance, but um, now I did a no mo may. Uh, just in this section up here and what I discovered I had was this like sawtooth grass now this is turning brown already but I hit it with the weed whacker yeah not really great um, but I like the I, I like the seed heads on it there's also some back tucked back there um, wild thing is is I have an almond tree right here and it blooms these pretty pink flowers in the spring and I'm just gonna keep it small shaped up and right behind it I have a butterfly bush you can see it it's I got this on clearance already this year nice uh, like magenta 
purple blooms. Ooh, I also have this, another type of rhododendron. Um, it has more of like the pinkish blooms to it, but like when this gets big, it's going to add like a nice backdrop to the pond or the, to the barrel ponds, I should say. More penstemon. I have an oak leaf hydrangea back there and it's a transplant. And as you can see, it is not doing too good. It's not happy with me. So I'm just babying it and it'll come back and it'll be flush and lovely like the rest of them. Uh, but one of the things that I found is this white blooming yarrow here. This is like a wild yarrow. And because I didn't mow, this actually bloomed and it's lovely. So I hope that I can get more of it and scatter it around on this hill. Back there I have, I have these trellises with climbing roses on it. They're babies. Like this one is only maybe like a foot and a half tall. And then in between the trellises I have butterfly bushes and it keeps going to cover this. But um. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's a baby garden, so these things take time to bloom, but overall, pretty happy with it. Oh, and I have to mention this grass right here. This is an oat grass. It's a very, like, a lime green grass, and it has the most beautiful seed heads on it, and in the fall, it's the most gorgeous fall colors possible. So in this garden, I actually have what some may call like the four mandatory colors, right? I have the yellowish grass, the oak grass, the blue for the iris leaves, um, the green for like the arborvitaes, and then also I have a Japanese maple hovering over this pond right here you really can't see it and you know what this Japanese maple had a hard time I, I always struggled with it but I have another one for its replacement so I will be very excited to uh, update you guys on that but I see pollinators go in here all the time like bees dragonflies and that's what I want to see I want to see them uh, butterflies even too, um, have access to water so, but this is my lovely garden, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed creating it. Uh, thank God that I'm able to do such things and that, you know, I'm blessed to have land to do these things and the ability to do it. All right, guys, so it's officially dark and um, I'm going to head in and wrap up the video so thank you for joining and I hope you enjoyed it and you could definitely research more on barrel ponds it's cheap to do it's something that you could even do like on a balcony so I'm excited for this area to develop more and I will keep you updated on it and thank you for tuning in hit the like button if you liked it add a comment and maybe subscribe if you like it so take care bye